at home family, always so nice for you to stop by today. We're so glad when the family gets together here in the at home kitchen. You know, there's always something going on. I just said to our floor director, Rick, Rick, what should I talk to the people about today? And Rick being the humble, nice guy that he is, you know what he said? Why don't you tell them how wonderful the crew is? He's such a humble guy. <laughs> I'm kidding him, of course, and I can't tell you what I said back to him, but you know what? Our crew is, they're really great people. They are. From the upstairs in the, in the uh, booth up there that's doing all the stuff that you never see. I don't even know what it's, I know the director's up there, the 80s up there, audio guy, uh, master control, all that stuff's up there. Plus the crew that's here running cameras and taking pictures and, and the you know, people that help with the prepping the food. We work together as a team. It's just like this bowl of fruit. You have an orange, you have apples, you have grapes. Now, individually, they all taste good. But if you would take some of all of those and put it together, you'd have a fruit salad. And that's very tasty because you get a bit of everybody. Every taste of every piece of fruit, you get a bit of it. That's like this, this crew is. We get a bit of everybody's talents, their personalities, what they laugh at, what they cry about, and we care for each other and what happens to each other. And you know, it takes a team effort. I tell the crew all the time, there's no big shots here. There's just each of us in our place that God's gifted us to be in. I'm in front of the camera. They're behind the camera. That doesn't make me any better than them. We are all doing a job for the kingdom of God. And that's the bottom line. Any of us could be in secular television making a whole lot of money. But you know, to some of us, money is not everything. It's pleasing the Lord and doing what he's called us to do. And that takes sacrifice. Anything you do for the Lord takes sacrifice. But you know, we're laying up treasures in heaven where it really, really counts. And God will take care of the payback when we get there. That's not why we do it, but we're, we feel privileged, this crew and I, we feel privileged to work in this capacity, bringing you our precious family, recipes every week, words of encouragement, just some ideas to help with your family to pull them closer together and to encourage you to keep going on that the Lord is right there with you like he is with all of us. So I will, I will echo what Rick said. He said, tell them how wonderful the crew is. I'm telling you how wonderful the crew is, except he doesn't know how to count because he just gave me a really big number. <laughs> anyway, hey, stay with us because today we're making my mother's beef vegetable soup and a whole lot more. You don't want to miss it. We'll be back right after today's at home hint. And here it is. To toast fresh breadcrumbs, spread a half a cup of fresh breadcrumbs on a microwave safe plate. Microwave on high, power level 10. In one minute intervals, tossing in between until beginning to turn golden, two or three minutes. Fast and oh so easy. For updates, pictures, stories, and more, like us on Facebook. To watch hundreds of classic episodes, subscribe to us on YouTube. And to get hundreds of free recipes, visit ctvn.org slash at home. Well, we're beginning our, my mother's favorite um, beef vegetable soup. Now, most people make their vegetable soup, if it's beef, with little chunks of beef. My mother never did. Because she started to make this in, when she and my dad got married in 1935. And that was depression years, war years. She always made it the ground meat. Well, then, after the war was over, she started to make it with the cubes. We didn't like it. We liked it with this. Of course, I wasn't around those early days, but you get the message. Okay, so we have uh, about two pounds of ground, good ground meat here, and we've got some garlic in there with it. We're going to add some onion, chopped onion. Vegetable soup, just think of every vegetable you like and put it in there. That's what the whole thing is. And you turn it up so you get it cooking because you want to get everything in there, break up the meat. You have to have a nice big deep pot like this. That really helps. And just let that cook for a little bit. It's important to do that in stages. You don't want to just dump everything in there all at once. You want to let the, this has to brown, cook, you get the best out of it. You get the onion out of it, the flavor of the onion into it. You get the garlic. And you don't want the super, super lean ground meat. 
because you want a little bit of that fat to flavor it. If you get the super lean, then it just tastes kind of like boiled water with a little bit of beef flavor. If you get a little bit of fat in it, not a lot, but that adds to the flavor of the whole dish. So, okay, so now this is, this is doing well. Now I'm gonna add a whole box of beef broth right into this. Now this is going to be the broth for your soup. This is gonna make it so good. If you make your own homemade broth, that's fine. Whatever you have. You know what else I do? If I have good brown, like my dad used to call it mahogany gravy, real dark brown gravy uh, from a roast beef dinner, and I have leftovers, I freeze it. I put it in a little container, put it in the freezer. When I'm making soup, I bring that out, and I thaw it down, and I add it to this, adds more flavor. Anything that you can use to add more flavor to this pot is great. Okay, so we have our broth in there. And then we really need a lot of moisture because we're gonna add a lot of vegetables. So along with that broth, I'm gonna add two cups of water. Put that in, okay. And we're gonna give it a tomato flavor, not big chunks of tomato. If you want, you can put, use the big chunks. I like the sauce. And I'm not even gonna pour all of this in. I'm only gonna do about a half of the can. And then we'll see, because you wanna keep tasting along the way to see if this has a flavor that you like, okay? So we're gonna give that a nice stir. And we pretty much have the basis in there. We've got on high, so it's gonna come up and cook real well. Now let's say that cooked for about 10, 15 minutes. Then I'm gonna add, and these are great. This is a bag you can get in your frozen foods. It's got, it's called soup vegetables. I used to buy and cut up all this stuff separate. There's corn. There's green beans, there's celery, there's carrots, onion, red pepper. It's all in this bag. If you don't want to use the whole bag, don't use the whole bag. I'm going to put probably a good part of this bag in here. And the color on that is going to be phenomenal. All right? Now we have our vegetables in the vegetable soup. And you just keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring. Remember, you have that meat in there. Oh, and you have a rich, beautiful brown broth for your soup. Now, we want some fresh, more fresh vegetables, so we just chopped up a cup, cup and a half of cabbage, fresh cabbage. That's going in, okay, like that. And to add additional flavor, this is a, one of those little packets of onion soup mix that you can make, they're so versatile, you can make so much stuff with this. I'm just gonna use about a tablespoon of that maybe a little bit more. That'll just add more deep flavor because that's done with the brown, in a brown sauce too, or in a brown flavoring, sorry. Okay, and then we're gonna stir. Now that looks pretty thick. I'm gonna need some more, I think I'm gonna need a, a little bit more water. So let's add some water. Because basically once you get all this done, you just leave it and it cooks. And let it cook for about, 45 minutes to an hour. There we go. Now, you're gonna keep checking it because you need to add more broth or water or if you don't have any of those, I'll tell you what's great. That would be these little goodies. These are called bouillon cubes. You should always have this, either the beef or the chicken, always in your pantry because if you need that flavor, these little babies, and this is what they look like, they come wrapped up individually, this is what they look like, and you just drop those in. More flavor. You have to get that beef flavor in there to appreciate that this is a beef vegetable soup. Now we're gonna let that come up to a boil. We have our potatoes, they need to cook, so we're gonna drop those in too. There they go. A couple cups of potatoes. If you have the little red ones, you can use those. But I'm telling you, this is gonna take on, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my tomato sauce because I think I'm gonna need that flavor from the tomato. Again, you could have crushed tomatoes. You could have um, the uh, stewed tomatoes that you buy in a can that has the pepper and the onions and celery. That all works out. You can't make a mistake with vegetable soup because it really, if you had zucchini and you wanted to put it in, go ahead. Whatever you wanna do here, just get it in there. And I don't, I don't salt heavily until I'm sure that I'm gonna need it, but I do pepper at this point. So we'll put some pepper in there, like that. 
And I'm just going to go light with the salt because maybe the broth is salty. Because you can adjust this at the end before we serve it. So I'm just going to put, this is kosher salt, so this is not even that much, all right? Now, the only thing left to put in this soup, and I'm going to do it like right towards the end, is about half a cup to a cup of rice because that's, that's nice. Some people use pasta. I don't like pasta because it soaks up all the broth. And I like my soup to be soupy. So I don't use the pasta, but I do put some rice in because mama always put the rice in. And she knew how to make good soup, I'll tell you. Now what I'm gonna do here, you can see when I pull up a spoonful, there's a big variety of all kinds of vegetables there. And it's gonna even get better as it cooks down. So we're gonna, we're gonna get, bring it to a boil, then we're gonna lower it, let it simmer for about 20 minutes, add the rice, let it cook for about another 10 minutes. It's gonna be perfect. We'll be right back with some more accompanying things that's gonna go with our beef vegetable soup. We'll be right back. If you love At Home with Arlene Williams, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of episodes with all your favorite recipes, holidays, and friends. Say hi to your fan club. Hi, fan club. And don't forget to click the bell so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Well, something's been added, and it's not anything on the counter, but it's my husband. This is Paul. The fan club will be happy, Paul. You're on the show today just for a little bit. Just for a little bit. <laughs> He's going to help us because one of the accompanying things to go with that pot of soup is a nice, warm, it's, I'm, I don't know if it's a muffin or a roll or a bun, but they're really good and they're really easy. So he's going to make them. I'm going to make a dessert. Why don't you tell us what you're going to do over there, honey? Okay. This is a really easy dinner roll. Okay. I'm going to mix a milk, a cup of milk into the... Uh, cup of flour. Two cups of flour. Uh, two cups of flour. Self, yeah. And rising. Self rising flour, flour. right? And then uh, six tablespoons of mayonnaise and a half a cup of uh, cheddar, cheddar cheese. And then I'm going to mix it in a bowl. You're going to put them in here. Gently mix it, not over mix, Don't mix it. it. Right. Because we want them to raise properly. Right. But are you going to spray this? And, and then I'm going to spray this okay. uh, muffin pan. What's it bake at? It bakes at three, 375. How long? For about 20 minutes. Not bad. And then. That will be good. We take them out and put them on a cooling rack. All right. Does this sound like he's rehearsed at all? <laughs> we went through this to make sure he didn't forget any. Okay, you start, and I'm going to tell them about the dessert. Okay. Okay. First of all, this is like when you have a soup that you've been a good person, you didn't have a lot of, a lot of fattening stuff, you can have a nice dessert. Well, this is like way over the top. This is a pan of brownies that you just make out of a box, a 19 and a half ounce box of brownie mix. And you make it, you bake it, and you chill it. Pop it in the fridge, it has to be nice and cold. Because there's two layers that go on top of that. The first one is a peanut butter layer. One cup of peanut butter, and then we're gonna add soft butter. I hope this is nice and soft, so that it blends well. If it isn't soft, it won't blend well, and you'll have chunks of butter in with your peanut butter. Not good. Okay, so, oh, nice. Okay, so we just, we wanna mix that up till it smooths out, just like that. See how nice that goes together when it's soft and smooth? Perfect. Okay, that's your peanut butter. And then we add our powdered sugar to this. And we're just gonna dump that in there, like that. And this is really kind of a, you could call it a filling, or you could call it an icing, a frosting. How's it looking, honey? Looking good? Good. Okay, to keep an eye on him over there. And you just keep mixing this until it becomes really a nice smooth filling or icing. And then we're going to spread that on top of the brownies. That's our peanut butter layer. Then we put that back in the freezer uh, until it gets chilled and it sets up. If you would try to put the third layer on top of that when it hasn't set up, it would just go all over the place and break down through, soak into the brownie. It wouldn't look very nice. And when you go to eat, it would probably melt in your hand. 
So we don't want that to happen. So we're just, we're working on this. We're gonna make sure that this gets nice and smooth. And just keep working it. Sometimes I think it doesn't seem to come through. You get changed to a metal spoon. This is what I've found. Sometimes these don't mix as well as you think. And you get a metal spoon. I don't know what the difference is, but so you'll see that that, I think, will come together pretty good. Let's take a check on that soup. We don't want that to cook over, OK? Oh, yeah, it's really cooked. Turn it down. Bring it down. There you go. Yeah, we just want it to simmer when it gets to that point. Laura's helping us out here today to make sure that we don't overcook anything. Here we go. Mmm, boy, it smells good. Looks good, too. Laura, while you're here, could I ask you to put this in the microwave for me? In just at 30 seconds. We're melting six ounces of chocolate, semi-chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate chips with some, um, about six tablespoons of butter. And that's gonna be like a ganache that goes over top of the peanut butter layer. Oh boy. Mmm, boy. So, I should have had a little mixer for this. It probably would have went quicker, but we'll make it. Okay, Paul, are you over mixing them or what? No. <laughs> I think you mixed them enough, honey. Good enough? Yep. I think they're okay. I don't have that. Uh... I think they're okay. Go ahead and start to plate them okay. up. Okay. Don't All forget right. to spray first, though. Okay. No, see, now it's coming into that peanut butter, absorbing all of that powdered sugar, and we're going to get that topping. We're just going to spread it over our brownies, as I said, and it's going to be good. Love, there's nothing like a pot of soup. I remember as a kid, when I'd go to school in the morning, mom would have all the stuff. She'd be chopping up the vegetables. She hadn't started it yet, but she'd be chopping them up. When I come home for lunchtime, the pot would be on the stove, barely bubbling at all. She would do it long and low. Oh, the smell. And I'd say, Mom, can I have that for dinner? She'd say, no, we're having supper tonight. No, you have a lunch. There's your sandwich or there's whatever. That's what you get. So, but boy, I'll tell you how we enjoyed that. My brothers would come in from school. Okay, Mom, what time are we eating? When your dad gets home, that's when we'll be eating. Could I have mine early? No. As a family, we sit together. She was very strict and I think a lot of times that's what's missing in our families we don't sit down to eat together and it's sad because that's the time that you do so much teaching and training that's where manners are taught that's where you teach your children to respect one another's opinions if they're different than than yours or theirs you have so much to be taught at that table and I think that's why we have an unruly generation right now because nobody's there for dinner time go through the drive through and get it Make a pot of soup, get the whole family together around that table, and enjoy each other's company. Talk about the day, what went on in school, what went on at work, what went on the telephone when Aunt Minnie called and said such and such and such. That's how you get deep roots in families. And that's what this is all about, family. I trust that you'll do that. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna show you the finished product. They'll all be ready. To get all the recipes from today's show, plus hundreds of others, just click the link in the video description or visit our website, ctvn.org slash at home. Well, here we are. Paul, I think this is something that people would really enjoy with their families. I think so. I we so. need to get our brownies, though, because we, we still have those in the freezer. So, Laura, would you get the brownies for us? And Because um, I want to show you them. That's a process, like I've told you. But let's look at the soup. Look at that. Does that look good or what? That is a hearty vegetable soup. And I tell you, heat your bowls up if you want it to be really, 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 really hot. And then just spoon your soup into those bowls. You could add a little Parmesan on top if you want. You don't need to. You really don't need to. And take that, honey. And then Paul made the biscuits. These are so good. They're so tender. And what's nice, they, they aren't smooth and perfect. You don't want them to be, because you're going to break these apart just like this. And what's inside is so tender. And you just 
I mean, it's got a little bit of cheese in there because we opted to put cheese. You could put any kind of a herb or spice. You could fix them up with garlic. You could put like oregano, Italian, make them Italian, whatever you want. You can customize them. But I kind of like to put that in the bottom of my bowl. And then I like to put my soup over top of it. Just like that. Oh yeah, just exactly like that. So good, so delicious, and so good for you with all those vegetables, yummy, yummy. Now there's, by the magic of television, there is our peanut butter chocolate brownie. Three layers, it's got the brownie on the bottom, it's got a layer of the peanut butter that I was mixing, and then that top is just some chocolate chips and some butter and a little bit of cream. And you mix that in the microwave, but you set that, you have to set that in the freezer. So you only set a half hour or so till it's, it's pretty stiff because you don't want one layer to, to bump into another layer. That's an awesome dessert. Kids love it. Who wouldn't love peanut butter chocolate in a brownie? Hello. I think this is gonna be good. Can't wait to, I can't wait to try it because you know what? It's just something so pleasant to sit with somebody you love, like I love you, and, and enjoy a good meal. And bring your family around the table. And you'll enjoy it too. I know you will. So thanks, sweetheart. Thank you. So be sure to join us the next time because it just wouldn't be the same without you here at home. We'll see you then. provided by Jordan Banana Company, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Travosburg, Pennsylvania. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.